are watching this video, you probably have exams coming. No, <laughs> just kidding. There is no need to panic because with these science-based tips, you will surely ace your finals. Hi, my name is Jael. I study educational sciences and on this channel, I share with you all the proper science-based stuff that you need to know to be the best student you can be with the least amount of time and stress possible. And today I will be sharing with you how you should study for exams according to science. So before being able to come up with a plan of action for studying, you should first determine the type of exam you are going to take. Because different exams require different things of you, and this determines what study techniques you should use. And I personally like to classify exams in three categories. Doing, where you should be able to solve certain kinds of problems, like in mathematics. Understanding, where you need to be able to make connections between the material and possibly any new information or questions that are presented on the test. And this is often the case for open book exams in the social sciences or the humanities. And then knowing where you really need to remember the information that you learned, such as when learning languages. And of course, exams can also require a combination of these skills. So for example, many of my exams in biology and psychology required a combination of knowing and understanding. And if you want, you can pause this video now and make a list of all the exams that you need to take and the skills they require of you. And now that you have an overview of the kinds of exams you are going to take, let's continue to the study techniques that you should use for them. So contrary to popular belief, the best way to prepare for doing exams is not to just go in and practice. Research has found that it is actually way more efficient to use worked examples. And worked examples consist of a problem formulation, the correct answer, and the steps that you need to take to get to this answer if applicable. And the way this works is that you first look at preferably multiple worked examples that illustrate a certain principle or skill and try to understand the pattern or logic behind solving these kinds of problems. And only after you have done this, you go in to try and solve problems for yourself. So try to collect work examples, either from your textbook or from past papers or question tests with solution sheets. Or if you really cannot find any, you can also use your own answers to practice questions that you know to be correct. And study those first before trying to solve problems by yourself. And I can really attest to how good this method works because I've used it for all my mathematics exams in uni and I have never gotten lower than an A-, minus, even for courses that were considered very difficult and that I definitely struggled with a lot at first. So I definitely recommend you to use this approach if you have to take a doing exam. So for understanding exams, there are two great study techniques. The first one is self-explanation, where after reading a section of the material you need to study, you stop and explain what you just read to yourself. And this has been proven to be a very efficient study technique that encourages you to engage in deep processing and link new information to things you already know. And the second effective study method for understanding exams is generative drawing, which is a very overly complicated scientific way of saying that you study by making a drawing of the information you are trying to learn. And research has shown that this also leads to better learning outcomes as it encourages deep processing. And before you start saying things like, I don't know how to draw, the main purpose is to identify connections and relationships in the material you are learning. And you can very easily do so with lines, arrows and simple shapes. Actually, it is better to keep the drawing as simple as possible, as it will ensure that you use most of your precious cognitive capacity for actually trying to understand the material instead of for making a beautiful elaborate drawing. Which can of course also be nice, but it's just not very productive for studying itself. And of course you can use these study techniques separately, but you can also combine them by explaining the material to yourself as you are drawing it to create the ultimate superpower study method. For knowing exams, there are also two study methods that go hand in hand, and those are active recall and space repetition. Active recall is a study method where instead of passively reading over something, you actively try to recall it from memory, which has been proven to improve long-term memorization. And the study method is most commonly applied using flashcards. But if you think that making flashcards takes too much time, I have made a video on how you can quickly turn your digital notes into flashcards. And for those of you who don't use digital note taking, I also have another recommendation at the end of this section, which also involves the second study technique, space repetition. So space repetition means that instead of going through all your flashcards multiple times at once, you repeat the process of going through your flashcards multiple times leaving short periods of time in between the sessions. 
which has been proven to be a way more effective approach. And contrary to popular belief, research has shown that it's actually not necessary to have increasingly longer periods of time in between your study sessions and that the main determining factor is the amount of repetitions. So even if you have a task coming up soon, you can start using active recall and spaced repetition now. And my recommendation for a quick and easy way to incorporate active recall and spaced repetition into your study routine is Remnote. I just tried out this app in one of my latest videos, but Remnote is a note-taking application that allows you to easily convert your type notes into flashcards and practice them using spaced repetition, both with increasing intervals depending on how well you did, as well as just practicing all flashcards at once. And I really loved how easy it was to create and use flashcards in Remnote, so I would definitely recommend you to try them. And then a final tip that I have, which I explained way more elaborately in my most recent video, is that first really understanding something will help you to memorize it easier. So if your exam also has an understanding component to it, make sure that you first use the understanding study methods before moving on to the knowing study methods. So those were all the science-based study methods that I would recommend for different types of exams. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that it was helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a like so that others might find it as well. And let me know in the comments what your favorite study methods are. Also let me know if you have any further questions about these science-based study methods or any other study related topic that I could answer in the next video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. Thank you again for watching and I wish you lots of love and a life of learning.